Thank you for listening to the message today. We would love for you to share in the comments how God is speaking to you through his word. If you would like to join our online church community, be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon on our YouTube page so you're notified when we post a new weekly sermon. You can also learn more about The Rock Church by visiting our website, rockag.com. If you are in the Scottsdale, Phoenix area, make sure to come visit us for Sunday morning service at 10 a.m. We would love to meet you in person. And if you would like to support this ministry today, you can donate by visiting our website and clicking the giving tab at the top of the page or by texting the amount you would like to give to the number 84321. Then follow the instructions in the text reply. Thanks again for joining us. We look forward to hearing from you. Amen. Um, We were part of the wonderful outreach to Cruza last week, and we're we're going to get to hear from a couple of those that went. So first we're gonna hear from Ron. The missions of this church are a corporate effort. <clears throat> the prayers that you gave was amazing. We went prepared, and the people were ready to receive. And we started to play. It was cold. But you know what? Jesus warmed our hearts. Amen. Jesus warmed our minds to receive. And we received. And we had a good message The gift that keeps on giving was the message. And so we just gave up ourselves, we gave up our talents, and the Lord used us. Praise God. Abby has not been with us that long, but I'm so excited you're here, and I'm so excited you went to Crusoe, and I'm excited to hear about your experience. Okay, yeah, so for those of you that don't know me, I'm Abby. Um, I haven't been coming here that long, I think since this summer, and I've never been to the res, and it was just, um, it was so beautiful to see. I had no idea what to expect, Um, and when we got there, we were the first ones there, and there wasn't a single car or anything in the parking lot, so we're like, well, what are you going to do here? And then, um, I don't know, vans of like kids and people just kept flooding in, and I think it was way more than we probably expected to come. Um, And it was just really neat to see um, how everyone in our team got used in different ways. Um, He used our gifts and he just, um, yeah, he was there with us and a lot of people accepted Jesus for the first time. And it was, yeah, it was, I think, yeah, there were, um, there weren't that many adults in the service, but I think five adults accepted Jesus. Um, and that's huge for that community. Cause I think we looked it up and there were like 200 people total in that population. So that's huge. And there were just, I don't know, tons and tons of kids. So there's a lot of young people in that community too, that are he- already hearing about God. So yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you both for going. Yeah, let's give them a hand. How exciting, part of our vision and seeing that happen. Praise the Lord, church. Thanks for serving and giving. A lot of y'all gave toward that. Uh, And we have a special guest here today that I didn't know was going to be here. Uh, But since he's here, I'm going to have him greet you. Uh, Pastor Marty from the White River Church He's down here in a conference and then doing a wedding this afternoon. He is also the pastor that's pastoring, goes over to the Carrizo Church after he does the White River service and takes a team. And so uh, Pastor Marty is with us. I want y'all to give him a hand. Wave. Come on, stand up with me. Stand up. He and I have been friends forever. And I know we're going to, I want him to greet you here just in a minute, but I want to tell you how I met this guy. And he remembers, uh, over the years, uh, pushing 30 years now, off and on, I've been, had the opportunity to preach a camp meeting on their reservation many, many times. And I had preached that particular camp meeting service. It's always in June. And I mean, we sang all night. I preached all night. We prayed all night. It was one of those services. And, uh, long altar call and uh you know it's over and I sit down on the front row I am worn out and this young man was sitting about three row three chairs in on the front row and this is how we met this has been 
This has been a long time. He, Pastor Marty's a lot, lot older than he looks. Uh, he said, uh, Pastor Dale, I'm, I'm Marty Paxson. Uh, I said, great, Marty. Dale Gray. He said, uh, uh, you, you preached a great message tonight. I said, well, thanks, Marty. I really, uh, really appreciate that. He said, and when I go to the res, I have so many friends up there that's taken me fishing all over the place. And especially the old timers before I preach, they always want a fishing report. So we had had a, there was four or five of us that went to the river. It's the best of both worlds. Fish in the morning for fish, fish at night for souls. <laughs> Fishing and preaching. And we had caught like 120 fish or something. I don't remember the num number. And we released them, by the way. And uh, he said, so, caught a lot of fish today. I went, yeah, yeah, Marty, we did. He said, so uh, 120 fish. I, I said, yeah, Marty, 100 and, 120 fish, good day. He said, well, the good news is it's been a really good service tonight. The bad news is I work for Game and Fish, and I'm going to have to write you a citation. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. And I paused, and I said, Marty, I put them all back in, and then he started dying laughing. Who has the nerve to introduce himself to somebody like that? <laughs> and we've been dear friends and traveled a lot of roads together since then. Uh, Pastor Marty, greet us. Let's give him a hand as he greets us this morning. Praise the Lord. Uh, it's good to be here this morning. First of all, I'd like to thank all of you guys for helping uh, Cariso Church. Uh, Cariso is recognized as a dying church um, on our reservation, and it's about 50 homes. And Pastor Hermenes' wife, uh, Sharon, was pastoring the church first, and she had passed away. So they didn't know what they were going to do. And I was, I, I pastor White River Church, so I'm about 45 minutes away from Cariso. But, um, one day I said, okay, I'll go to Cariso and preach over there, just, just one time. Yeah. So I go to Cariso, and the people are just loving me. And I'm from White River. I used to be a police officer in White River. I did, I did law enforcement as a game ranger, almost rest at your pastor. He did? <laughs> <laughs> I remember one time I heard him preach, and he said, man, I almost started a jail ministry because of this guy. <laughs> and so... But um, the limit on the reservation is five fish. And, that's, and some guys in the church said, go scare him. You got, your, oh, you got your badge? And I said, yeah. You never I, told <laughs> me the backstory story till right now. So, Show him your badge. And I said, okay. So I went up to this guy and I, I said, man, I'm going to have to arrest you. I'm sorry. Here's my badge. And you should have seen his face, man. <laughs> The first thing he said was, but I threw him back, you know, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I, um, I come a long ways. I come a long ways. Um, man, I, I love, I love pastoring. I love preaching. I love doing what I'm doing. Like I said, I did police officer. I did law enforcement and gaming fish. But when I went to Crease, just that one, I told God one time I'm going to go over there. That's it. But after that time, God kept waking me up in the middle of the night, oh. midnight. And I get up and I'll be like praying and it's like, hey, what, what's, what's up, God? <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to sleep here. But he said, you need to, you need to stay in Cariso. And so I said, okay. I, you know, I, I took it. I took it. I said, I'll, I'll pastor Cariso until they get a pastor. Well, long story short, Cariso, some of you guys that saw Cariso, there's no home down there for a pastor. You know, it's, it's very, it's, it's dying. And, and uh, the community is a traditional community they believe in other gods and and I was like man so so I you know fighting with God I finally took the step and man ever since I took that step people have been coming to church people have been calling people have been asking questions people and I, I'm so happy that I that God and how many of you guys know God does stuff in the middle of the night yeah. right look at Paul and Silas right Paul and Silas were free in the middle of the night right a lot of things happen in the middle of the night. So That's when right. you're when you're sleeping, when God wakes you up, wake up, <laughs> because it's, it's 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 important. That's it's right. important. 
And so Carrizo's on my heart. Ever since then, I've been traveling back and forth. Every Sunday, I have other helpers. I mean, I, I, I manage just going back and forth and seeing that church grow. Even though there's five adults there, man, every Sunday's different. There's someone new that comes in. Someone, there, one time we had 30 adults. And I was like, where did all these adults come from, you know? And, but it was God, and, and we're still growing, even though sometimes we get three adults, sometimes we get five adults. But thank you from the bottom of my heart, and I know, I know God's doing something here. I can feel it. I know God's here, and he's everywhere, and, and I love your pastor. He's one of my mentors, and even though I almost threw him in jail, prison, <laughs> whatnot, but I love this guy, and, and I'm, I'm glad you guys are taking care of him. And, and, man, I hope to see you guys soon again, and, and I'll, I'll come and visit every now and then just to check on this guy and, and be with you guys. God bless you. We love you, buddy. We love you. Let's give Marty a hand. <laughs> Pastor Marty, we couldn't have timed out any better if we'd have tried to plan it. Thank you for being here uh, today. Praise the Lord. Well, we're going we're gonna to keep going up there. There's another uh, uh, in the Navajo Reservation. We're praying about a mission up there, one of the communities that's on my heart. I'm not sure that we'll go yet or not as Tisto. Uh, that's something the Holy Spirit has had on my heart. Part of, as you know, part of our vision uh, to reach the world is to come alongside rural and native churches and be a blessing and, and assist. So uh, praise God, Pastor Marty, for giving us the opportunity. It's a joy. We had, I think, 12 people there uh, that their life was also touched and changed, touched and changed forever. Praise the Lord. Wow, there's so much. Thank you every Christmas for all these years. Uh, Y'all have always gave us a Christmas gift through an offering, and we really uh, appreciate it. In the early years, uh, it was our entire Christmas. We were kind of growing together financially and we were living uh, paycheck to paycheck. You were paying us as much as you could. Uh, and uh, but some years, if it hadn't been for the Christmas offering, my kids might have not had much of a Christmas. And so thank you. Y'all, uh, we have grown. Y'all do compensate for me very well, I might add, which I also appreciate. I'll tell you, it's been a joy to serve you when it was slim. It's been a joy to serve you when it's not so slim. I, it's the same for us. We love you. We appreciate you. And thanks every year uh, for giving and for your kind words. Um, it, it means a lot. You might be, uh, let's don't go there, Dale. Uh, I just, let me just say this, and, and uh, Pastor Marty is also a presbyter up in his section, so he and networks with the kingdom up there in a big way. So he's involved with a lot of pastors as well. You might be surprised uh, how little encouragement some of our pastors uh, receive. And so thank you. Y'all have always been an encouragement uh, to us. Praise God. Luke chapter 2. Man, I still got plenty of time to preach. Uh, Christmas service. We're going to do a Christmas communion uh, next Sunday. Uh, uh, from 10 to 11, it'll be a shorter service. And then I, I just feel like as I've been praying over the new year is we need to start the new year strong. And I'm, I'm, I'm okay with New Year's resolutions. I, I, to walk with the Lord and do what we do, we need to refocus. <laughs> Not just once a year, but once a month, once a week, once a day sometimes if we're going to really have the focus that we need. Uh, but I do feel when we leave a year and enter a year, it should, I, I enjoy refocusing, setting uh, whatever we want to call it, New Year's resolutions. I think that's a good thing. Because uh, sometimes we keep those resolutions. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway, uh, I just feel like we need to hit the ground running. We are going to make even a larger emphasis Coming out of COVID, we made an emphasis to start pushing out to uh, our community and unsafe folks in our circles. We are going to take another whole, whole step in that arena. We'll be starting our girls' ministries and our Royal Ranger 
ministries, ministries to girls and boys. Uh, never been a greater time. I still believe if you're born a boy, you're a man. And if you're born a girl, you're a female. That's what the Bible teaches. And we've, and I've mentioned that to y'all many times, but I just feel the burden that the church has to do its part uh, to teach children because the schools are teaching our children all kinds of garbage, right? So uh, anyway, excited about the new year. Come for communion. Just, just come and uh, it'll be a good time together. Pastor Christian uh, led the team last week so, and did a phenomenal job. And I know Ron touched on the message. I haven't heard his message, but I'm going to preach his message someday. I like the title. But uh, Pastor, thanks for leading. Wave at us over there. Thanks for leading our team over there. And he's on our staff. Y'all know that. Let's give them a hand. And on behalf of the staff, and I'm sure some have been able... Uh, we give them their Christmas cash gift out of the general fund, which comes from your tithes and offerings. And so, and we were, we, we were able to be generous with them. We want to continue to be generous with our staff. So anyway, praise God. Uh, everybody stand up. I love the Christmas songs, don't you? Everybody smile. Let me see you smile. I don't know. Come on, smile. Now, don't walk around, but smile. Let me see your smile. It was hard for some of you. I, I saw some of you gritting your teeth instead of smiling. Now, turn to somebody next to you and say, Merry Christmas. <laughs> and you can have a seat. <laughs> you can be seated. Man, praise the Lord. Luke 2 and 8, let's read it. We've been reading uh, different segments of the Christmas story. This will be our third week. We started out and learned some things from Joseph. Uh, last week we wrote, read some things about Mary. And this week we're going to read another segment. The, I say this every year now, especially the last probably 10 years. I love Christmas, and I love the Christmas story, and I love the Christmas carols. I love it all, because Christmas is about Jesus. And so the older I get, maybe the more I appreciate uh, the Christmas season, uh, but I enjoy, even as, and I hope you do it as well, you know, I usually preach two or three messages during the Christmas season. I have to reread the Christmas story, you know, but... You shouldn't have to. I don't have to. I enjoy doing it. So if you haven't read uh, the Christmas story, take your Bible out this week and read it. And uh, the Lord will speak to you and it'll bless you. Luke 2, man, verse 8. And whoo, I love this. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. Now, I'm going to read quite a few verses. I love shepherds because shepherds were country boys. Shepherds were rednecks like me. Farmers, herders. So I really feel personally attached to these good old country boys. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. Oh, and the angel said to them, now the angel speaking to the country boys, and the angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you of all the signs Almighty God could have sent. Of all the signs, you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. You know, I touched on it last week. I got to touch on it again. The sheep, the spotless lambs that were raised for the temple sacrifice, because you could only sacrifice a spotted lamb at the temple, right? Without blemish. 
They raised those sheep. Now, I don't know if it was the same sheep these shepherds were raising. I couldn't speculate on that. But they raised those sheep outside of Bethlehem. And when they went to take them for slaughter, right, they wrapped them in swaddling clothes. Hmm. Scripture's so powerful. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, can you imagine thousands upon thousands of angels singing, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Some translations say upon whom his favor rests. The word favor there in the original language is grace. When the grace of God rests on your life, there will be peace and joy through every situation. And also in reverse, if God is pleased with you, his favor will rest on your life. Two weeks ago, we talked about the favor of God. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Joseph, Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. So they're, they're telling Joseph and Mary, the reason we're here, guess what just happened a, a while ago? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> verse 19, but Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. Hallelujah. And throughout the day today, I do something just uh, maybe not quite different, but I'm just going to share a few thoughts about these verses today. But again, when, uh, you know, we go back and read the Christmas story, uh, for me, it stirs up memories. I have all kinds of memories. Did you know there'll be more phone calls made on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day than any other time still in, in America to uh, loved ones? You know, it is a time, and Darla and I were sitting uh, in our living room a few days ago drinking a good cup of coffee, the Lord's drink. Can I get an amen? Well, most of us are on the same page. On that one. Oh, you know what? First one up here and have a cup of coffee at Starbucks. I don't know who's coming first. How about two, Shelly? I didn't say three. I didn't even plan on doing that. I just felt, oh, wait. If you insist. Merry Christmas. You know, I know Starbucks has its political issues, but just about everybody you do business with does really, if you do the research. Where was I? Oh, God's drink. <laughs> and, and we're just reflecting about our parents, all our parents, just actually in recent years, in the last five years, I think we've lost all our parents have gone to be with the Lord. And uh, we miss our parents. We were close to our parents. I was, believe it or not, I was close to Darla's parents. And she was close to mine. So uh, we loved each other. In our, and we were just sharing fond memories. And, you know, it, I know that sometimes Christmas can be sad. I understand it can be difficult. It can be challenging. Uh, because some of the folks that used to be with us aren't with us. And my heart goes out to many of you. I know who some of you are. You're here this morning. And I, I, I just tell you, try to dwell on the fond memories. You know, try to dwell on what was good. And yet our prayers, and we prayed for folks last week at the altar that in that specific realm that may be struggling during Christmas. But it's a time. Uh, all kinds of feelings. Feelings of joy, feelings of sorrow. But overall, it should be a happy time. And we begin to laugh about some of the things our, 
our parents had some quirks like we all do. And as much as we miss them, we just, we laughed about some things. Uh, guys, there's so many memories. Christmas season is a good time to remember. It's healthy. Also, I remember every Christmas that I was one of those kids. As I got a little older, six, seven, eight, you know, once we found out Santa Claus wasn't real. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I know that's a surprise for you, Ned, but Ned's 66 or 7, but I'm sorry, bro. Uh, oops, I thought everybody's in kids' church. <laughs> I'll leave the parents up to that personal conviction. Sanny's coming, Sanny's coming, y'all. In the country, they say Sanny. <laughs> Santa Claus. Uh, I was always the kid, though, that, man, I'm going to find my gifts ahead of Christmas. I mean, is there any of you out there? I can't be the only one. Yeah, Josh was one. Your parents never knew till just now, Josh, all these years. I mean, I sneak in the closet. I sneak to the barn. I sneak to the shed. My parents hid gifts everywhere. By the time I was 10, 11, or 12, I could find all of them before Christmas Day. Some of them I had to rewrap. So those kind of memories. The only time mom and dad got me as I got older, they hid my Christmas gifts at a neighbor's house. Yeah. Now in the country, the neighbor was a mile and a half down the road. So they got away with it uh, then. I, they must have caught on because I was 16 or 17 for that one. Anyway, I could go on and on and on about memories. But the best of all is to remember the Christmas story, and but there are so many things that we forget or we've forgotten when Christmas comes around. And just like I talked about the new year, Christmas is a good time to remember some of the things that we've forgotten, to refocus on some things that we've lacked focus in, especially as it pertains to the Lord. A few years ago, a friend of mine had gone into a a music store to buy music. He was wanting to buy, I don't know if it was a music to Amazing Grace or How Great Thou Are or, or whatever it is, but he could not find any religious sheet music at all. So he went and asked the, the clerk, uh, the girl there at the store, if there was any religious music. And this was her answer. Well, I'm not sure. Maybe some of the Christmas music is religious. That's rather a sad remark, isn't it? Because Christmas is about Jesus. Christmas is all about Jesus or should all be about Jesus. Without Jesus, Christmas wouldn't be. And my message is I always try to simplify them. This one's real simple today. But we've lived long enough in our lifetime. This has been going on for centuries. But our culture for a long, long time has been trying to take Jesus out of Chris Christmas. Now, we should love people and honor people and respect people from other religions and maybe try to win them to Jesus because there's one way to, and one mediator between God, the man Christ Jesus. Can I get an amen on that? But we don't have to put it down their throat. But Christmas is about Jesus. In our culture, our schools, our colleges, our elementary schools, our governments, there's a movement that's for a long, long time, most of my life, especially it, it magnified and accelerated in the 60s and 70s because of a number of things, at least from my perspective as a, at a man my age. People want to take Jesus out of Christmas. And we've all heard the stories, and I won't dwell on it too long. You know, small towns especially. Uh, you know, the ACLU is going to go after small towns that have manger scenes because small towns can't pay an attorney 
to hire an attorney to fight it when it's perfectly constitutional to have a manger seat. So they set precedent. And I don't want to go down that path long. So we've heard, we hear baby Jesus in the major scenes getting stolen. Recently, I heard of a teacher uh, that in the coloring with the littles, the, the first and second grades would, during Christmas season would not allow them to color in green and red because those are Christmas colors. And this particular teacher did not allow candy canes in her class because upside down it was a J and stood for Jesus. How ridiculous is that? But J does stand for Jesus, church. Maybe next year we ought to hand all our, let's don't get our kids in trouble. Maybe we ought to give a case of candy canes to take to school. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? Remember, Jesus is the reason for the seat. Now look, it's easy for us to shoot the world down in some of these little stories I've painted. But church, remember, Jesus is the reason for the season. I think about these shepherds. I, I think about things like these. Why shepherds? I mean, why shepherds? You know, Pastor Marty, those shepherds could easily have been Native Americans. You know, country boys and Native Americans, we have a lot in common. Why shepherds? I mean, uh, why didn't they go? I mean, uh, why didn't they go to the rulers? Maybe work it all the way up line to Caesar's palace. I mean, why did that happen? I mean, why not? Or, or maybe, and you could speculate all day, maybe they just, maybe God just thought, you know, I put him in a palace. Uh, or uh, maybe they won't respond so favorably. And this is all speculation. But, but let me say this. Jesus still loves people that serve in palaces. Don't throw them under the bus. Boom. Somebody just dropped that weight to the ground. You hear it when I said that? Boom. <laughs> Jesus loves people in palaces as ungodly as they may be. Don't forget about them. Why didn't they go to the religious leaders? The religious, le religious leaders of the day were expecting a Messiah. They were expecting a king. They were expecting. Why didn't Almighty God? I mean, look, we're talking a manger. Most likely it was a cave with straw and manure and all the animals. And the manger, of course, was the feeding trough, if I could put it in uh, uh, different words. I mean, the king of kings, the savior of the world, was put in a manger. Why in the world didn't they take him to the temple? Or, or, or why in the world? I, you know, the, the Messiah to the church, so to speak, that knew about the prophecies. And I've got an answer for that. I don't know. <laughs> but it's fun to speculate. <laughs> no, he sent the good news to shepherds while they were at work. Hey, by the way, God will show up while you're at work. I'm glad for the couple of hours we have on Sunday morning, another hour, hour and a half on Wednesday night and our different small groups that are working. I'm so thankful for all that. But God wants to show up everywhere you are. And He will. So He shows up to work. Tells them what's happening. And they take off to see and to confirm. It terrified them at first. Sometimes when God shows up, it'll terrify you. It did them. But he showed himself to shepherds. He said, I'm going to give you a sign. And this sign will be a baby lying in a manger. A Savior. A Messiah. The Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus has been showing up ever since. 
I'm glad he shows up in dirty stalls. I'm glad he's still showing up in mangers. I'm glad he's still showing up where some would think he would never show up, like the highways and the byways. Jesus is still showing up. I'm glad he's still showing up, Pastor Marty, on the reservation. I'm glad he's still showing up in uh, the hillbillies in eastern Kentucky. I'm glad he's still showing up downtown at city council. I'm glad he's, he's showing up. God's doing something in our country. God's doing something in our nation. God's doing something in our city. God's doing something in you. But I'm glad he still goes not just to the highest high, but the lowest low. God loves the wealthy and he loves the poor. God loves the the people in power. He loves the powerless. I'm glad Jesus loves us. And I'm glad he still shows up in dirty stalls like my heart. Our hearts without Christ are dirty stalls. Hearts that may not even want Jesus. Hearts that may be living in sin. Hearts that may be enjoying their sin. But let me tell you what saved people. In the last 24 hours, some of y'all have had some dirty thoughts. And I'm not talking about just sexual. But I'm glad through Jesus Christ, the grace of Jesus Christ is still attracted to dirty hearts, both the unsaved and saved. I'm glad Jesus Christ and the Word of God says, even while we were yet sinners, Christ died at a cross from us for us. And we're going to talk about that. He came, he, he was in a manger, he walked the earth about 32-ish years, and then he was crucified, buried, and rose the third day. Hallelujah for the power of God and the resurrected Jesus Christ. And he'll come to your dirty life and your dirty heart and your dirty choices. And if you'll just ask him to forgive you, he will forgive every dirty thing. Somebody give Jesus a hand. So remember... Jesus is the reason for the season. But we can let so much interfere. Right? I mean, come on, all of us. The season gets busy. Hey, I thank God for the gifts and the joy and the kids. That's all part of the season. Don't throw out the baby with the bath water. <laughs> Come on. Don't throw out the baby with the bath water. Well, there's so much wrong in our world. There's so much wrong in the church. Well, maybe if you just maybe smile for a while, things would change. But things do interfere. We have to ad- admit that. We can get so busy and we get... And you know, the Lord wants us to have family. He just doesn't want family come for Him. Plenty of verses. Plenty of verses in the New Testament talk, that, that we should love Jesus more than we even love family. That Jesus should become and then family. You can find a number, number of scriptures. Uh, uh, red letters. I call it red letters. Jesus said that. He even said in uh, uh, Matthew, and talking to some folks, he said, if you don't hate your mom and dad, par- I'm paraphrasing, you can look it up. If you don't hate your mom and dad, you can't even follow me. Now, that can kind of throw you because the word hate means in the original language, compared to our love for Jesus, nothing else compares. And our kids knew that. We raised them that way and they, they turned out all right. They know how much we love them and, and care for them. And we're going to have another big Christmas. Boy, if y'all could only look into the gray living room on Christmas afternoon, it will, we'll be here at, uh, at the service We are the crazies of all the crazies. We open the gifts individually, 
My older son is the DJ. He changed the music. Each person, then he changes the music while the person opens the gift and DJs along the way. And Lord, Lord, depending on what the gift is, it's a, it's a, it's a zoo. I, it was always a zoo when they were little. Now that they're adults, it's a bigger zoo than it's ever been. Now, I know some of you say, just wait till you have grandkids. I saw you, I'm watching dad go, yeah, just wait till you have grandkids. I don't know if I was reading your mind or not. You, we remember the first Christmas when we, uh, we had all the kids and we had all the gifts and they got up. My kids always slept late. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know why I got up at four in the morning. I knew what mine were in two weeks in advance, but I got up early anyway. And we say, okay, you can have your gifts. In about seven and a half minutes, Christmas was over. It's just a big pile of paper. I'm like, what happened? Darla and I, the first time that happened, we look at each other like, well, Christmas is over. So, <laughs> so we just started rotating, and, and now Trey's added the music and the DJ in, and uh, uh, I could tell you so many stories. A couple years ago, uh, we, Jessica got tomahawks. She got a set of tomahawks. So Trey put on tomahawk. Uh, music and Jessica danced around the room with the tomahawk. I mean, she's working with the kids this morning, so I'm telling on her she's not even in here. So enjoy Christmas. But don't let anything interfere with Jesus. Don't let anything interfere with Jesus being the reason for the season. And this year, my kids, and it's, I do it almost, well, basically every year, we'll sit at the table to eat. I'll make a, just a quick review. and a, Before we ever open the gifts, actually, we talk about the reason. And then, uh, in a good way, not too long and not too hard, I just make challenges to my adult children now. There was a little boy decorating a tree and he loved the gifts and, and there was all kinds of this going on and that going on and uh, the family's just sitting back drinking in all the beauty and mom and dad's all excited and it got real silent and the little boy looked up at his mom and dad and said, what did Jesus have to do with all of this? Maybe that's a question I need to ask you this morning. Somebody said, I knew it was coming. What does Jesus have to do with all of this? Maybe another question would be for you this morning, here or at home, if you're watching at home, where does Jesus really fit into your life? Not just on Christmas when we remember and it's all this. Where does Jesus fit in your life on a daily basis? On the list of priorities, what comes first? Is it Him? I thank God for the new year that's coming up, a time to recommit. But don't you think it's time, Christmas time, that we all take a hard look inside our heart and life and see where Jesus fits in? Where is He in your list of priorities? I think maybe we need to take a look. But especially at Christmas, because whose birthday is it anyway? Just whose birthday is it? Hey, Houston, and what if you had a birthday and you got one coming up in Jan January? But we all go over to Coulter's house. He gets the gifts, the cards. We have the party for Coulter instead of you. 
Things could, I think that would interfere. Things can interfere. Merry Christmas, church! Merry Christmas, church! He's the reason. And more and more, we've been talking for a year, invite people, tell people, witness. We need to, Christmas gives us an opportunity to tell the whole world why we have Christmas. Because believe it or not, some of our younger people in the younger adult generation, they weren't raised in church. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Now, maybe you think I'm nitpicking and when I get ready to say what I say, but I'm getting ready to say what I say. Don't let the world steal, not just Jesus, but don't let the world steal Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I remember 10, 15, when, when happy holidays went up on the advertisements and we didn't want to offend anybody and we didn't want to be politically correct. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. And what I found out when you tell people Merry Christmas, most of them like it and most of them say it back. It is a happy holy day. It is. It is. I'll, 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 and so a holy day could be a number of holy days. <laughs> On the res, it could be a number of things. Down here, it can be a number of things. It could be a number of ways, a number of religions. And as I started the message, there's only one way, the man Christ Jesus, y'all. But every holy day is not Christmas. How many of y'all like chocolate cake? Woo, I'm in good company. Well, I got a cake back here, and the first one to the front gets a piece of ch <laughs> Trick. Wow! <laughs> if I give you a cake, you'll need to start running, Chris. Oh, we got our Christmas cookies and brownies from Grace yesterday all the way in Florida. So Grace, I know you watch. Thanks, Grace. She's in Florida now. She put double icing on them. I mean, it's that thing. I'm an icing freak. How many icing freaks we got? Then how many is the cake freaks? See, we're about 50-50. We'll pray for the cake freaks. <laughs> Merry Christmas. But what my point is, I'm really making a point here. Every cake's not a chocolate cake. Every holiday's not a Christmas day. So let's don't let them just take Jesus out of our culture. Let's don't let them take Merry Christmas out of our culture. It's an opportunity. And let me say this. Let me say this. Don't be offensive with it. Merry Christmas! I don't, you see the happy holidays, and we know the people at the counter have been trained to say happy holidays, especially in some stores, and they go, happy holiday, thank you for your business. Merry Christmas! I mean, come on. Now, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but some of y'all say it with an attitude. Like, by God, they're not going to tell me not to say Merry Christmas. <laughs> and that's a true story. Yeah, even during the Christmas season, our wives get us in ties. <laughs> true story. Michael, don't laugh. Milo will have you in a tie next Sunday. Put him in a tie, Milo. I'll buy the tie if you'll put him in it. Danny, what are you laughing about? I, I get you, I get you a tie too. We may have to hold him down to tie it on him, but look, be joyful, be full of the Holy Spirit, love everybody, love Jesus. Don't let other things get in the way. 
Share the Christmas joy. Say Merry Christmas with joy. You say, well, maybe they'll, uh, they'll get an attitude or uh, it will offend them. Don't do it to offend them, but if it offends them, it offends them, y'all. We cannot back off as Christians on any issue because it's offensive. A lot of times the gospel is flat out offensive. When Jesus says for me to take up my cross and die daily, that's offensive. When Jesus says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and I'm a sinner, I go, wait, I'm a pretty good guy. That's offensive to me. Don't be offensive. Be full of the Holy Spirit, full of joy. Keep Jesus as a head. Say Merry Christmas. Spread the Christmas joy and watch what the Holy Spirit will do. Don't take an attitude on yourself. Don't get an attitude yourself. Don't say anything much any time of the year to try to offend somebody. Please stop it. Some of you stop it. Do it with joy. Do it with full of the Holy Spirit. Do it as a salt of the earth. Do it as city shining on a hill. Do it with your word season and say Merry Christmas because you genuinely love Jesus and you genuinely love people. Merry Christmas. And then if they get offended, well that offends me. Well, I'm sorry but Jesus loves you. Not like I just did it. I showed you how not to do it. I kind of showed you how to do it and how not to do it. Right? Give the Lord a hand y'all. Tell him Jesus still loves. Jesus loves him. And again, not to make a point or... Y'all hear me, don't you? Because Jesus is the reason for the season. And I think even the next week yet, we have a great opportunity just to witness and love on people and share joy by a simple two-word phrase, Merry Christmas. Let me hear it. Say it with a smile. That's better. I know some of you couldn't get it out when you had to smile. Bah humbug. I used to be called Scrooge. Now, I'm not telling you that story. And the reason, oh, come on, you like the dirty stuff. And I gave you a Starbucks card. Here, bring it back. I love all y'all so much. You're our family. We left our family years ago and you became our family. Why are you saying all this today, Pastor? Because we, it's, it's fun. We've laughed, we've learned, we've been challenged. But we have to look beyond Christmas. We have to to look beyond the Christmas season. Thank God for the baby in a manger, but he's not a baby in a manger anymore. Thank God for the suffering Savior that did come to earth and died at the cross to pay the penalty for our sins. Thank God for the meek and lowly lamb, the Scripture called him both in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Thank God for the Savior that was beaten, mocked, rejected, beat with a whip, crucified on a cross. Thank God for the Jesus that walked the earth for 30 some odd years, 30, 32 years, right in there. Thank God for that Jesus from the manger to the cross. But the scripture said, and Jesus said this before Abraham was I am. We know from Scripture and the beauty of the Scripture, even the words for God in Exodus 1 and Exodus 2 were plural. <laughs> there was always the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We zip from Genesis all the way to John, and we see that John said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Listen, it's hard to comprehend because God is God, everybody. 
If you can fully comprehend God, then you just made yourself little G God. God is God. But the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit have always been together. And how it's hard to fathom. It says even in the scripture that Jesus was there before the foundations of the earth. When we come back and do Galatians in the first uh, Wednesday of January, it says Abraham had the gospel preached to him. Think about that and study your Bible for a few weeks on that. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. Now we interpret that beginning and end, but the word Alpha means there was no beginning, and Omega means there is no end. God has always been. God the Father, God the Son, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. Thank God for God, Jesus Christ. Because again, He said, before Abraham was, I am. And then you fast forward and you say, how are you going to get a Christmas message out of the book of Revelation? Because look, I'm just, we can't park here. Let's enjoy the day. Let's enjoy the week. Let's enjoy our families. Let's enjoy Jesus. Let's do all that. But we can't leave Jesus in the manger. Because the same man that wrote John, John, wrote the book of Revelation. The Revelation, John. The, 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 uh, John was called according to Scripture. And you look in John chapter 21, he was the disciple Jesus loved. Now, Jesus loves everybody, but him and John had a special relationship while they're here on earth. And so then, after God has been, Jesus has been crucified and risen at the right hand of the Father and the Holy Spirit come. John is in jail on the Alcatraz of the day. The Isle of Patmos. And he has this revelation of the eternal Jesus. That's why we can't stay just for a moment during Christmas or a few years in earth, we need to see the eternal Jesus. And so the book of the Revelation, Jesus shows up to John in a vision. And you can go read all of this. What did John see? He saw a Jesus that had piercing eyes that looked like blazing fire. He saw, saw his head that was white as snow. He saw his feet glow like bronze glowing in a furnace. And Jesus spoke in that vision and it was like the sound of many rushing waters. His face was so brilliant it shined like the brilliance of the sun. Have you ever tried staring to, at the sun lately even in the winter time thank God for the Jesus that came to the manger it was the first sign but Jesus isn't this little cuddly buddly dudley Santa Claus He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's the Savior of all mankind. And you can, if you haven't read the book of Revelation, check me out on all this later because it's all in there. In the, in the Revelation, Jesus won't be weeping over Jerusalem anymore as a humble servant. He will come riding on a white horse with the angels' armies. He's coming. Never again will be Jesus be accused of having demons. You know, the early, the Pharisees accused him of having G Jesus because the old serpent, the devil, will be cast down from the earth in the lake of fire. That's who our eternal Jesus is. He will no longer be judged are called ungodly in his day by the Roman government. In his case, he will be the judge. He will be the warrior. 
No longer will there ever be, and, uh, and all this comes from Scripture, no longer will he be mobbed, shouting, crucify him, crucify him, spitting on him, beating him, slicing his body. No longer will that happen. Oh no, there'll be a hallelujah in heaven when we get there someday that says, hail king of the Jews, Jesus himself, hallelujah for our Lord, almighty God reigns. And he reigns, and he reigns, and he reigns now. And I'm going to say something, as bad as some of y'all think the church is in bad condition, there's also a church that's not in bad condition. Plenty that have not bent the knee to Baal. Jesus will never again be numbered with sinners and transgressors, nor placed in a tomb, for he is the first and the last which was dead and is alive forevermore. That's our Jesus. That's our Jesus. That's our Jesus. So, we need to remember what Christmas is about in the context Christmas is about. What's interfering with your walk with the Lord? What's getting in the way? When will you allow Jesus to fit into your life? It's His birthday. Revelation 3.20, the Scripture said, these were the words of the Lord too. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man, I might add woman, hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and sup with him, fellowship with him, and he with me. The, door is knocking, the Lord is knocking on the door of our heart this morning. And the question is, will you make room for Him? Lord, we thank You for Your... I uh, thought there's a lot of joy in the house because there's a lot of Jesus in the house. Lord, you're the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You're the master of those who've asked you into the heart. You're the Savior of all mankind. But it's our choice. Lord, for those of us that know you, not, Lord, this, it's not to, it's just make sure we all, including me, Lord, is we together are praying and say, we want you to be first in everything in our life. And everything trickles down from there, Lord. And of all the seasons, Lord, we don't want Christmas to interfere with our relationship with you. After all, it is your birthday, Jesus. But I pray this over the men and women and the children that's in here, then that's in the children's church and our nurseries, that the joy of Jesus and the presence of the Holy Spirit would fill our homes and our workplace Lord, a Merry Christmas at work or at the grocery store might make somebody's day.
Oh, Holy Spirit, we're only in this building for a few moments, but I'm praying that as you went to that unexpected place on Christmas morning, that you would continue to meet the men and the women, both saved and unsaved, in the most unexpected places. And I'm asking specifically this, and agree with me in prayer, church, especially my prayer warriors. Lord, I'm praying you just show up in a tangible way in unexpected places this week this week in our circles of influence Lord even today some of our people the girl walking down the street get, we were getting ready for church and a couple of our people prayed for her she broke down and wept in the parking lot and as a church Lord we're not going to believe the lie of the enemy There's still Jesus believing, God seeking, spirit filled people here and around our country and around the world that love you with all their heart and soul and mind and strength. And that would describe our church. Could we stand together, please? If, if you're able to stand. There may be several here this morning. We're going to sing that song, Make Room, when I finish my call. But when we begin to sing, and we're going to sing together, we'll have a, a formal closing. If you've got to go, you can always slide out quietly. You already know that. But I think maybe we all, if we can, should stay a little while as we sing this song of worship. Make room. But when we begin to sing, if you haven't made room in your heart for Jesus Christ to be Lord and Savior of your life, I want you to make your way up here. When, the, when we begin to sing. And, and, and uh, that's the, the altars are always open for everybody. Everybody that comes to this church knows that. But today my specific call is for one or ten one or two that says, one, I've been away from the Lord and I need to make a fresh commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. And you do, if you've been away and you're on the comeback, come up here, we'll pray for you. Number two, I've never made Christ my Savior and I know I need to make Him Lord and Savior of my life this Christmas. Then I want you all to get those two groups to get out of your seat and move to the front. And we're going to pray for you. And in our seats as we stand, we're going to worship Him just for a moment before we leave. We know the kids need to be picked up at 1145. We got a little time, even for those with children, to make room. I believe, church, if I speak, that as you make room, you respond this morning, it may, check, it may tweak your Christmas gathering with your family. Maybe the Lord will speak something new to you or something that maybe you've left out. You all hear what I'm saying. Because I'm believing that the Holy Spirit will speak. So worship team, lead us and those that need Christ come when we begin to sing. Yeah.
this is my surrender And I will make room for you To do whatever you want to To do whatever you want to And I will make room for you To do whatever you want to To do whatever you want to Here is where I lay it down Every burden, every crown This is my surrender
surpasses all understanding is touching your heart right now. You know, even for a couple of moments in the church, it's pretty good to be just peaceful for a few hours, isn't it? Amen. It wasn't my goal this morning to fill the altars. It's really never my goal. Sometimes they're full and sometimes there aren't. But before I leave, and can everybody hear me or does the music need to come down a little? You good? We good? In my mind, there seems to be one, two, th three, three young ladies here this morning that you just need to give your heart to Jesus or make a public commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. In my heart, and it's not because I know everybody here, I don't. This seems to be, uh, I'm just going to take a shot at it. Two young men that still, you need to give your heart to the Lord. Maybe it's a recommitment. I just want to pause for one more minute to give you that opportunity. Because you're, you're in the valley of decision and you say, oh, there's so many people here. There's this, there's that. But the Lord is tugging on your heart. He's tugging on your heart. So before we leave, I want to give you one more opportunity to make Jesus Christ Lord and Savior. And if that's you, I'm standing right here. Will you come up here and let me pray for you? Get out of your seat and make your way to the front. And I'll just wait a moment because there's never no pressure or manipulation or anything that goes on here. We just let the Spirit draw you to the altar. But you say, I need to give Jesus Christ my heart. Will you come? Stay with me. Just stay with me. Yeah, I knew it. Hey, boys. I believe there's others. Y'all stay right here with me. Whoo, you're serious. Y'all are serious, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Dominica, is this your friend? 
Well, I'm sure you're just as dynamic as she is. Y'all are good people. Come up here and stand with your sister. We love you. You're already family and you didn't even know it. There's others. You sure you don't want to come? God's working here, y'all. It's powerful. Somebody, come on up here. Come on, Shelly. Come on, stand behind this family. Mama, two kids. And we're going to pray with them. Jesus is the reason for the season. There's, there's, you sure? Are you sure? Okay. Are you ready? Are you ready? Will y'all follow me in a prayer? Yes. And will y'all help with an extended hand? Dear Lord Jesus, Jesus. say it with me. I felt your tug this morning. And it's real. Jesus, I've heard you love me. That you died for my sins. And Lord, I'm a sinner. We all are, Lord. And I'm asking you this morning, Jesus, to come into my life. I've confessed my sin. And now I'm making an invitation. I'm opening the door of my heart. And I'm saying, Jesus, come into my heart, my mind, my life, and be Lord and Savior. You are mine. And I am yours. And I thank you right now, Lord. For saving my soul. Amen.